All right, guys. Bitcoin holding on at 66,000, not too shabby, off its high of 73,000. You know, it's interesting. The um, Bitcoin crypto, it always does the same thing. It just plays with your emotions. You know, Bitcoin hit $73,000. We drop all the way back down to like $58,000. That's a pretty good dump, guys. 73, that's like a 20, is that, right? It's like a $15,000 dump. I can't even do the math. What is that? Yeah, that's like a $20,000 dump. That's a big fucking dump. That was the pre happening dump. These altcoins got hammered. A lot of them dropped 50%. Some of these meme coins, some of these meme coins dropped 60, 70%. I'm not going to go through the list. Overall bloodbath. And now over the last couple of days, we're starting to see an uptick. We're starting to see Bitcoin kind of making its way back up. We're seeing all coins eh, kind of making their way back up. But you have to remember, Bitcoin always goes first. And this is what Bitcoin does. It does the same thing every time. Everybody gets excited. Well, first of all, this is what happens with crypto. First, everybody gets depressed. Look how they were in the fall. Everybody's depressed. Everybody's miserable. Oh my God, Bitcoin's not going to do anything this year. Or the cycle's not going to work. Then all of a sudden, things start pumping. All coins start pumping. Then all of a sudden, you start to hear the, the we're going to all-time highs. We're going to all-time highs. Then we dump. Then we start pumping again, and we blow past all-time highs. Then, of course, it's the, oh my God, we blew past all-time highs. Uh, we're going to a $250,000 Bitcoin. 250. That's what all the YouTube videos are. Then what happens? We get to 73,000, which is what? $5,000 or $3,000 over the all-time high. And we get an epic toilet bowl flush dump down to $59,000. Now we're making our way back up. Now I would pretty much say we're in the boring phase. The happening is over. There's not too much other talk right now. The ETF thing's over. We don't have that to look forward to. Now what we're waiting for is... We're waiting for the four-year cycle to play out. What happens after the happening? Supply shock gets cut and Bitcoin is forced. It's forced the pump. So the pump we're going to see next in Bitcoin that takes us to $100,000, $120,000. Some people say $150,000. I really don't think we're going that high. I'll be selling most of my cryptos at like $120,000. I already sold my micro strategy play. And yes, I know I could have made a little bit more. But guys, I'm looking to get out of this. I'm not going to be the last one in the musical chairs. I've already been the last one playing musical chairs in crypto. And when you're the last one, it's not fun. It's not a fun feeling. I can tell you that right now. So I like to get out a little sooner, even though I might miss some gains. So that's kind of where we are right now. Um, all coins are kind of coming back up, just waiting for Bitcoin to do its thing. Now, in order for Bitcoin to really start pumping off the halving cut supply, we're probably gonna have to wait another couple weeks or a month, in my personal opinion. We have to wait for everything to kind of take effect. We have to wait for the miners, you know, sell their current stash of Bitcoin. Then their new stash comes in. They have to sell that for more. I believe the profitable, the, 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 I believe the profitable price for Bitcoin is $80,000 for miners. So we should see um, by summer, mid-summer, an $80,000 Bitcoin. It has to happen. If it doesn't happen, it means there's like a failure in the blockchain. And that's never happened before. So right now we're kind of in a boring phase. That's why I haven't made a video in a couple of days. I'm concentrating on other things. You know, there's other things to do but crypto. And if I start obsessing over this shit every day, I'll probably do something stupid anyway and, and make, a, make a bad play. So let's see what's going on. Not a lot. This is an interesting email I found. I've moved to other things. Satoshi Nakanomi. Satoshi Nakamono's final email revisited after 13 years. In the last known communication in 2001, Satoshi Nakamubu Nakamoto discloses that he had moved on to other things, handing over Bitcoin to the community. And a lot of people are saying like, oh, how could he do that? What's wrong with him? And it's just like, guys, I'm going to do the same fucking thing. You know, I'm no Satoshi, but after this bull market and I make the mo the amount of money I'm going to make, you're not going to see any crypto videos from me. I'm going to have my YouTube channel is going to be something else. I'm going to have no interest in crypto after I cash out and I make some money. Yeah, I'll still have some crypto and I might have a couple thousand dollars in the, for the next bull market to play around with, but it's not going to be like this time. You know, Satoshi 
He got bored with it. He he already even though he, he probably cashed out most of his crypto or at least some of his crypto, a good portion, you know, in like 2013, 2014, he still made millions and millions and millions of dollars. And he's probably living in some, you know, resort somewhere in Mexico and living the high life. Why would he want to obsess over this shit every day? Why would he? And he probably has people in his family who he gave Bitcoin to and they're cashing out and giving him some. So it totally makes sense that he would just want to be done with this. And um, I don't find that to be uh, to be all that shocking at all. If you want my personal opinion. All right, Cardano. You know, Cardano got hit pretty hard, went to 80 cents, down to, I think, 43 cents. Now we're back up to 52 cents. Typical Typical bear market, bull market stuff, guys. Our typical bull market stuff. I was expecting a, a 50 to 70% dip in Cardano, just like every other altcoin, and that's pretty much what it did. I'm kind of glad we got it over with. So Cardano skyrockets 500% in, funds, in fund flows. Cardano has surged ahead, witnessing a astounding 500% increase in fund flows in a recent revelation by coin shares. Cardano has emerged as a front runner on the cryptocurrency market, witnessing a staggering 500% surge in fund flows within the past week. You know, guys, this is why I try to throw in the Cardano video, at least once a video, showing you that while a lot of people talk shit about Cardano, behind the scenes, everything is rocking and rolling. It's doing exactly what it did the last uh, bull market. And people who are not in Cardano are going to get screwed. And I know one, you know, one YouTuber I watch, his name's Bob. He's the Chinese guy. He's been in Cardano since 2018. He didn't sell any of it in the bull market last time when I was. I was on his comments begging him. Now that we're after the happening and Cardano's getting ready to roll, two months ago, he starts buying all these Solana meme coins. He's ragging on Cardano saying, oh, you know, Cardano doesn't have USDC. Oh my God, it just doesn't have the market in Solana. All he does now is talk about Solana. So what he did was he put all this money, he transferred all this money and got out of a bunch of other coins. I think he sold some Cardano too to put it into Solana meme coins at the top and now he's down 80%. You can't make this stuff up, guys. And now all of his videos, and it's not just this guy, I don't want to pick on him. All his videos are just like, Cardano can't succeed without USDC. It can't succeed. Cardano needs more marketing like Solana has. Guys, Solana's a scam. It's being marketed by used car salesmen. I mean, what are, what are you looking for? Yeah, it pumped hard, but who cares? It, it had a big pump because scammers pumped it. It's not a quality project. And here's an article right here about Solana. FTX to auction off more Solana this week. As you guys know, Solana was the biggest whole... Sam Bakeman fried who we can all agree was the biggest scammer in crypto, right? The biggest scammer. What was his favorite project? Solana. Everybody who promotes Solana is a giant scammer. Crypto banter. The sleazeball out of South Africa. Everybody who even talks about Solana is a scammer. And I guess when you talk about it enough, it pumps... You know, Solana has been pumping a lot off people using it for meme coins, but a lot of these meme coins have already dropped 50, 60%. Not to mention, if you want to get out of these meme coins, the Solana blockchain doesn't even work. Now, a lot of the argument people give on Cardano is, well, Cardano doesn't have USDC. Charles Hoskins has already came out. He said, I think USDC is basically a pathway to... Here it is right here. Here's the article I found. I want to pull it off because not to go off memory, but Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson labels USDC as an early CBDC. He doesn't trust it. Okay. So he thinks by Cardano getting involved in, C in USDC, it's going to basically make it more, not as decentralized as it is. Now, if you don't like that, if you don't trust, Car if you don't trust Carl, uh, Charles Hoskinson's decision making anymore, yeah, go get out get out and get into another coin. But I think I'm very happy with Charles Hoskinson. He bought me a rental property that I just sold and made a lot of money on. And that's thanks to Charles Hoskinson. I'm going to put my faith in Charles Hoskinson, not a bunch of YouTubers. If Charles Hoskinson says he doesn't trust USDC, and I don't trust it either because USDC is regulated on Coinbase. The US government is involved with it. That's why he doesn't want to be involved with it, guys. That's why. Yeah, if, if Charles Hoskinson comes out and says USDC is now on Cardano, it might get a big pump. But overall, it's not going to affect the price once we get into alt season. It's just not. So you have guys like Bob and all these other guys on YouTube complaining about it. 
Guys, if you don't like it, sell all your Cardano and go into Solana and see how that works out for you when you're getting into Solana at the top. So like I said, guys, I'm putting my faith in Charles Hoskinson. It doesn't matter. He's not going to fuck up. It doesn't mean Cardano is not going to go to zero or whatever, but things have been working out pretty good so far. Anyway, so my thing is, if you don't trust if you don't trust Charles Hoskinson, then get into another project, get into a scam. But guys, we're six we're probably six months away to where Cardano is going to absolutely kill it. I had the same problem back last bull market. I'm like, oh, Cardano is not doing anything. I guess I should jump in the projects that have already pumped because they're just going to keep pumping, and it cost me thousands and thousands of dollars. And when I see people like big YouTubers. I mean, not big, but medium-sized YouTubers talking about this and shitting on Cardano because it hasn't done a 10x yet like Solana. I just think to myself, these are the people that aren't going to make any money. Like, and it's not, like I said, it's not just him. You go on Reddit, you go on forums. The amount of people who are jumping out of Cardano to get in Solana right now or getting some other coin that's already pumped, guys, that's the definition of dumb money. Smart money, yes, was buying Solana last year at $8, which I wish I did. But smart money is not buying Solana now. You a coin that's already pumped 12x and every other day it has an outage. So let's use some common sense, guys. I mean, you know, life is life is about common sense here, and you gotta use some common sense. All right, by Binance founder Xi Pao should spend three years in prison, DOJ says. I think they're gonna try to make an example out of him. You know, there is documented evidence that he was trying to skirt the law. He was trying to, um, they were sending emails to people telling them how they could use VPNs and stuff like that and not get caught. So I think they probably will try to make an example. Now they might just give him probation or time served type thing, but I wouldn't be surprised if he serves at least a couple months in jail um, just to kind of make that example. It is what it is. I really don't care anymore. Binance is doing just fine without him, so whatever. Uh, billionaire Mark Cuban issues post-halving Bitcoin warning amid unprecedented crypto free price chaos. You know, Mark Cuban's always spreading, threading, yeah, spreading fear. He's a big lib. He, he's just like completely out of touch. And every time Bitcoin or crypto has a little bit of volatility, all the carnival barkers come out and talk about how crazy it's going to be and volatile it's going to be. Yeah, crypto is always volatile, guys. We just had, a, if you survive this dump, we just had, a, I mean, I actually, it didn't even phase me. Like, I'm so used to this shit. If you just survive this dump, Cardano, 80 cents, now went down to 40. Bitcoin, you know, drops $20,000 in the week. This is Bitcoin. If you can, If you can handle that, you're doing just fine. If this is the if if you feel like you want to be in a mental hospital right now, you're getting a lot of anxiety. Yeah, crypto is not for you. Buy something else because um, some people can't handle it. Litecoin hits new milestone of 12.5 years uninterrupted uptime. Litecoin continues to evolve with broader cryptocurrency market. Litecoin, one of the pioneering cryptocurrencies, has achieved a remarkable milestone, marking 12.5 years of uninterrupted, un uninterrupted uptime. The, achieve, the achievement underscores the network's reliability and re resilience. You'll never see this article for Solana, guys. You'll never see it. In 12 years, you're going to see Solana died eight years ago. You're never going to see an article, oh, Solana had 12 years of uninterrupted uptime. Guys, Litecoin is the definition of what Satoshi Nakamoto wanted to create when he created Bitcoin. Litecoin has never had a problem. It always works. That's why I'm a big believer in it. Uh, fundamentally, it's great. Litecoin is one of those coins. It's a definition of a cryptocurrency. I'm going to Europe. Let me load up a couple thousand dollars of Litecoin and I can use it in Europe and it's always going to work. That's what Litecoin is used for. Litecoin is not used for meme coins. It's not used for NFTs and all that shit. It's used basically as a cryptocurrency. And that's why when I think cryptocurrency, I think Litecoin is the best. And that's why I think because of the fundamentals and because of the, uh, the amount of people who are going to be using Litecoin, especially for payments, is why I'm a big believer in Litecoin and I'm still thinking between five and $700 um, going into this bull market. And let's hear what Brian Kelly has to say, finishing off, talking a little bit about the halvening and what he expects to happen. 
um, for crypto. 450% rise after this halving, or does the yeah. effect sort of dissipate each time? So I think it's certainly that the halving effect is going to dissipate. If you talk about how many dollars into the market this is, you're talking about uh, last week it was about $60 million a day of, of sell pressure. That's now cut in half to $30 million a day. Mm -hmm. But you're talking about a trillion dollar market, so it's very, very small. So I think, if anything, it's going to be the psychological impact of it and the fact that we're all saying, hey, look at this four-year cycle that we have out there. Probably what's more important, though, is when you get to see some of these bigger brokerage firms come online. So Morgan Stanley, UBS, once they are online and they can have their customers start come into Bitcoin, that's a lot of pent up demand. What about what the ETFs? How does that change the game now? Because last having we didn't have ETFs. That's right. And I think actually it changes tremendously. That's why Morgan Stanley and UBS are so important, because yeah. up to this point, they have not been able to buy those ETFs. Their mm -hmm. clients have been able to buy it. So if you think about it, you now have an has an asset with the most demand it's ever going to have, right? You've got all these people just able to come on and supply has been cut, coins on exchange are down, so you're having a whole bunch of pent up and potential demand hitting lower supply. To me, that's the bullish setup for Bitcoin. We yeah, he couldn't have said it any better. So that's what's happening, guys. I mean, there's not much else to talk about. We've had the happening. We're just waiting for that happening price action to kick in. It might not happen for a month or two. I've always said going into the summer, uh, by middle to end of summer, we're probably going to be rocking and rolling to the point where your Uber driver is talking about Bitcoin, your pilot, you know, you, you go for a flight, you get them a flight and the pilot's going to come on and say, oh, you know, the weather is going to be 85 degrees in Florida. And how about that Bitcoin? Like, guys, this is what happens. And we're coming up on it. So I'm very excited. It's just a waiting game right now. Everything we've been talking about on this channel for the last couple of years is playing out. Um, and all of our coins are looking good. You know, Cardano back up to 50. Uh, I saw that uh, Theta was hanging on in the $2 range, which you really can't ask for more than that. I mean, it... It handled this dump extremely well. I saw uh, Litecoin $85. Not much of a dump on Litecoin, guys. VeChain. I heard somebody complain about VeChain the other day. Guys, like, uh, VeChain was a penny a couple months ago. Went up to $0.05. Cents. Now it's at $0.04. Cents. What, what are you looking for here? Like, what are you looking for? I want to smack people. I want to punch people. People don't understand. They're way too emotional. This is everything is looking great. If Theta had dropped was back down to 50 cents, I'd say there's a problem or under a dollar. If VeChain had dropped back to a penny and a half, I'd be like, oh wow, really didn't hold those gains all that well. We got a problem here, sucker. But everything's holding. If Litecoin went back down to, you know, Litecoin $90 right now. If like up 7% in the last 24 hours, if Litecoin was back down to $50, I'd be like, oh good, you know. There's not much, uh, not much going on with Litecoin, but guys, everything's holding on great. I wish I, you know, I'd like to see Cardano get back above 60 cents. Um, and I think we're going to get there, but overall guys, everything's great. I'm not making videos every day cause it's kind of in that boring phase, but one day you're going to open your eyes. That Bitcoin happening supply shock is going to kick in. Bitcoin's going to be rocking and rolling. We're going to be in full blown alt season. Summer's here right around the corner. And, um, you got to be ready. You got to be ready. And, you know, pretty soon I'm going to be making videos talking about cashing out. And now it's time to cash out. Okay, let's start DCA now. So that's all coming up in the next couple months. Mark, mark this video. It's all coming up. Like and subscribe. Talk to you later.